Black kite. Where did you learn to speak like that? <laughs> Your accent. Oh, I am no longer French. What am I supposed to wear this on camera for you? Or... You beat Peter up? Look, Ava, Eric told me what he did to you. Okay. Have you slept with anyone? Have you slept with anyone? He's sleeping with fishes now. No, just stop it, Emily. Just make me. It's a hard time believing your FBI now. Which is good, right? My name is Melissa. Where do you live? I live in New York City. Look, wear something nice. Take that thing off. Okay? Wear something nice? This doesn't look good to you? Go to hell, David Miller. Hey, nice shirt. All of the video is destroyed. Not entered into evidence and not archived. I want it destroyed. Clear? I do nothing but think of you. I don't eat. I don't sleep. I do nothing but think of you. You keep me under your spell. You keep me under your spell. You keep me under your spell. Hello, dear. Did I call you or did you call me? Is, uh, is Emma there, Laura? Or? Mm, no. She's at her tennis club. Emma hates tennis. <laughs> Don't be silly. Texas backhand, they call her. My little champion's going for Allstate this time. Of course, she's going to have to put the work in. You're too soft on her, Daniel. It's David. It's David, Laura. David, the new boy. Who was one before? Always brought her roses. Paul. Paul, that's right. He was always so polite. Always would hold the door open for her. I appreciate that. She's always bringing home these boys she meets at the hospital. And I tell you, every time there's something wrong with them, David seems dependable. He's handsome too. Reminds me of you when you were younger and wore those sharp suits. Would you like me to have my daughter call you when she gets back? No, 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 it's fine. You, you know, you, you take care, Laura, okay? Hey, babe, are you being good? My mom is very sick. They put a special bed in her room. Uh, yeah, I know, honey. Mama told me I'm sorry. And look, I still have my glowworms. Me, 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 me. It's the best way to manage the pain. She's my favorite present. I never put her down. Wait. Okay, okay. That's. Do you think Mima is going to die? I don't know. Uh, I'm not a doctor, so. Uh, maybe she'll be okay. I don't, I don't know, kid. Is this one of the good lies you tell that make people feel bad? No, you are getting too grown up for your own good. Okay? The doctor told me a funny joke. He did? What time do you go to the dentist? To the <laughs> That's funny. I'll tell Mama to call you. Wait, no, I'll... Dada! Oh, uh, hey, babe. Mima's very sick. I tried to go in a special bed, but Mommy yelled at me. Yeah, things are a little hard right now, honey, so we just have to be strong for Mama, you know? That's what the doctor said. Are you gonna tell me a bedtime story? Do you know the story of Rumpelstiltskin? Rumpelstiltskin? Now, can I hear it? 
Okay, sure, yeah. Um, All right, let me see if I can remember. Um, okay, well, once upon a time, there was a girl. And she was the daughter of a miller, I think, which is a kind of farmer. And she had the most beautiful blonde hair. And it was so beautiful, it caught the sun like it was gold. It was so beautiful. But, well, maybe she becomes one. Just shh, wait and see. All right. So, her father, he liked to tell tall tales. Okay. And one day, he boasted to the king that his daughter was so talented that she could spin straw into pure gold. Right? And the king, he called him out on his bluff and he summoned the girl and he said that if she could truly make gold from straw, that he, he would allow her to marry his son, the prince. But if not, he'd chop off her head, okay? Yeah, because he's a very severe king. Well, I mean, then she'll be a queen and in the old days, most of the girls wanted to marry a prince, right? So, I like that. Anyway. The king, he locks the girl in a tower with a spinning wheel and a small pile of straw. And he says he's gonna return in the morning, all right, to see if she has made the straw into gold. And the night passes, and in the morning, she's given up all hope, right? When all of a sudden, a little small strange man appears, okay? And he asks her if she has any wishes, and she says she wishes to turn the straw into gold. Right? And so the imp says he can do such a thing, but first she must give him her necklace. So the girl gives up her necklace, of course, and the imp, he sits at this spinning wheel and he starts to spin and he spins and he spins and he spins and he produces this pile of golden thread. And then there's this knock at the door, right? Because it's morning and, and he just disappears and the king comes in and there's this small pile of gold and he is amazed the king is so amazed but he's suspicious because he thinks this might be a fluke you know what i mean so he moves her to a second tower with an even bigger pile of straw and again same challenge spin the straw into gold by morning or off with your head so the girl waits and waits all night long and then again just before dawn that little imp appears Okay, and this time he demands her ring. So she, of course she gives him a ring and he spins the gold into straw and then he disappears and the king comes in and there's this pile of gold and the king is almost convinced. But for a final time, he throws her in a third tower with a huge pile of straw. And he says, you gotta turn this straw into gold. And he leaves. And yet again, just before dawn, that imp appears. But the girl, she doesn't have any jewelry left. Right? So what's she going to do? And the imp says, If you give me your firstborn child, I'll turn the straw into gold. And the girl, she's so terrified that she says, Yes, of course, of course. And the imp, he spins the entire huge pile of straw into gold. And right before the king walks in, he disappears. And the king opens up the door and he's so excited, he can't believe in it. And he says, Truly, you are magical, he says. That's his voice. And then the very next day, the girl, she's married to the prince, right? And, and despite all the weirdness of this marriage, they actually really like each other. In fact, they fall in love. And two years later, that little girl, now a princess, is pregnant. Okay, um, thank you for that. Now, in the summer, she gives birth to this beautiful baby daughter, okay? But her, her happiness about this new little girl, it's, it's short-lived because guess who comes back? The imp, the imp reappears and he says, I've, I've come to collect my reward, he says, and the baby, is mine. And the princess, she sobs and she offers him like all the riches in the in the kingdom. But he insists, he says, I want that baby. And she begs, she begs him please to, and finally the imp says, okay. If you can guess my name within three days, you can keep the baby. But if not, the baby is mine. 
as we agreed. And he leaves, and the princess, she is distraught. I mean, she immediately sends all of her staff and her servants out into the kingdom to figure out this little imp's name. But by midnight of that first day, no one's been able to track down anything, or the creature, or his name, and the imp, he appears, and he asks her, What is my name? And she guesses, Is it... David? And he laughs, he says, no, two more guesses, and he leaves. And the next day, nothing. Nobody comes back with any information, and he arrives again at midnight. And she guesses this time. No, 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 it's not. He says, no. <laughs> laughs the imp, okay? He says, no, and he leaves. It's not Stephen. And the next day, the princess is so upset because she doesn't know what to do. She only has one more guess, one more day. So she leaves the baby with her servants and she just walks into the forest because she's so worried she's going to lose her baby. And she wanders and wanders all day and into the evening. She wanders and suddenly she comes on a small clearing. Okay, in a little field, and in that little field is a little tent, and in the center of it, there is a little small fire, and she hides. She hides behind a bush. And out of the tent, to her amazement, out comes the imp. And he's dancing around the fire, right? And he sings, Today, today, plans I make. Tonight, tonight, the baby I take, the princess will never win the game for Rumple Stiltskin is my name. And smiling to herself, the, the princess runs back to the castle because she heard his name. And the, that evening, the imp arrives, right? And he's, he's kind of gloating and he asks her his name. And the princess kind of looks at you, she's kind of pretending to be sad, and she gnashes her teeth a little bit, but then she looks him in the eye and she says, your name's Rumpelstiltskin. And the imp, his eyes bulge, and he looks like he's gonna he's got burst, and his head goes, I mean, red, and he shakes it like he's gonna explode, and all of a sudden it's, oh, do you think he should? Okay, well, then Rumpelstiltskin ran away and he never came back. And the princess became queen and her daughter grew up to be a wonderful queen in her own right. And everyone lived happily ever after. That was a good story. I guess being queen would be good. What do you think the imp was going to do with the baby? Was he going to eat it? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know, maybe he was, uh... Maybe he was lonely. At school, we have to write the author's message for every story. Was Rumpelstiltskin the bad guy? I guess. Uh, I mean, now that you mention it, most of the people in the story were bad. I'm tired. Will you stay with me? Well, honey, I, I, I have to go out, I'm afraid, so. But yeah, hey, you've got, hey, you got your glow worm, right? Yes, yeah, she's called Glowy. Oh, I love that name. That's a great name. All right, come here. Give me a kiss real quick. Mm -hmm. Love you, kid. Night, night. it's serious and I'd like to know if anybody else here agrees that maybe it's time we talk about it you said before that this was a war perhaps that's right yeah, yeah. Uh, quick question um, why, why are you all so keen for us to incriminate ourselves 
What? I'm not. I'm just. No, you know you you know you remind me of Chris. Um, Sorry. You, you remind me of this guy. So uh, his name was Chris. Uh, Simon. Does that sound familiar? Simon McMillan, Red X Army. Works for Black Kite Lodge. Got everybody's favorite military contractor. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Yeah, no, you, you do look a lot like him. But you, you can't be that Simon McMillan, right? Because then that would make you a corporate spy for Prosper, right? Hmm? Chris, what is this? Chris? Hey, look, guys, come on. Let's talk about this, OK? Uh, so this is true, then, what he's telling us right now. What the fuck, Chris? Yeah, yeah, see? Everybody, this is Simon McMillan, OK? He is, a, he is an employee of Black Kite, sent on behalf of Prosperin, okay, to spy on our meetings. You are trying to inform on our constitutionally protected activities, pal. It's called entrapment. You cut, and I had you over for dinner. In my home! Hey, hey, get away from me. Hey, hey, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Hey, he hey, hey, look, he doesn't have a wire, guys. He doesn't have a wire. He's probably recording us on his phone. Get his phone! Get his phone! Motherfucker! Hey, look, I can explain. All right? I, 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 I am no traitor. Who are you? Get out. Just get out. Okay. Yeah. Is that a cross okay? Can you turn that off, please? She died around 4 a.m. I asked the nurse to wake me if it happened. Uh, she was uh, really in and out the last week, you know, just under really heavy sedation. She never really uh, woke up enough for us to have a final goodbye. We didn't talk about Papa. But you know, there was no deathbed conversion. But, you know, her lying there, it was, it was easier to see her for what she was. She was a woman in a bad marriage who was just doing the best she could. Look, Emma, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make this funeral. I'm sorry. This, uh, this mission is just too intense now. David, I don't care about the funeral. We need to talk. Yeah, let's... let's Let's talk. I want to. I want to be able to look in your eyes. Wait, Emma. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy birthday to you. Oh, honey, thank you. I miss hearing you sing. I love you too. Barry set up the TV so we can see you on the big screen. Hi, Ava. How's the freezing <laughs> north? Oh. Hi, Barry. You know, it's colder this year. Thank you so much for sending those winter socks. Really appreciate it. Okay, so <clears throat> here is David. Hi, happy birthday, Mrs. Martin. I've heard uh, so much about you. Oh, call me mom. Oh, okay then. Um, how's uh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> how's uh? How's Florida? Oh, Florida is a paradise. Did Ava tell you that we moved out here for my husband's lungs? It has been a lifesaver. 
We wanted Ava to come out here with us, but she moved to Ann Arbor instead. Detroit was a boom town in my day. You two are just too young to know about it. Oh, honey, I miss you so much. How are the lessons going? Um, Ma, I told you I had to take a break with those. I need to make a little bit more cash. Those singing lessons are so expensive, it's criminal. You know, Detroit just got too dangerous for me, David. I had to move out of there. You know, it's not the neighborhood, either. It's the police. Yeah, I was getting stopped every week. But I guess you don't have to worry about that. Mom, you don't need to teach David about systemic racism. Uh, no, no, ma'am. But uh, that's, that's a shame. I mean, I used to live in Detroit, but, you know, it was a lot different back then. And now I'm living in L.A. recently, so I know a thing or two about corrupt cops. Hollywood! <laughs> Yeah, Barry and I took a vacation a few years back. Awfully dirty. Yeah, I, I have to admit, we prefer our Disney in Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Well, it's awfully <laughs> nice to meet you, David. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too, guys. What do you do for work, young man? Uh, well, I'm, I'm between jobs at the moment, but, you know, I got some money put away, so, you know, make a plan. He has a boat. I, well, the boat is more of a hobby, but I like to work on it, so, you know. Well, uh, hopefully you work on more than the boat. Amy needs the right man to help her settle down. Well, I don't, I don't know if I'm that, so. Because I, you know, I wouldn't want to change a thing about it. It's her spirit that is precisely what attracted me to her. Well, you are making my girl smile, so that's all that matters. You know she's going to be famous one day. Don't be bashful, you have a beautiful voice. Yeah. Are you blushing? Anyway. <laughs> You're blushing. We have to go. We don't have to go Okay, anywhere. we ha we gotta go. We have nothing to do. We're gonna wrap this up. I love you so much. Big day. Okay, sweetheart, I love you so much. And it's so good to see you so happy. Thank you, Mom. I love you. Nice to meet you guys. Bye. Hello? Who are you? I'm Ava. Who are you? I'm Alba, and this is Glowy. Hi, Glowy. Are you a baddie? A baddie? You're in my daddy's baddie house. Your daddy? Look, will you come over? I want to talk to you face to face. I'll hear what you have to say, but I can't be alone with you right now. Boo, listen to me. Why did you have to keep it a secret from me, huh? Listen to me, I, I was young, okay? And I knew the kid was better off without me. And so, so I, I ran and, and I let everyone down, you know? And we, and we just started talking again last year, and I support them, I send them the money, but I don't, I don't deserve to, for them to be a part of my life yet. I don't. I mean, just, can you understand that? And I'll, I'll, I'll help us, a, she's a special kid, and her, her mother's never gonna forgive me, but we're past that now, and I, I have to, I have to prove to them, you know, that I can be trusted so that I can be a bigger part of her life. Uh, is this why you went out of town last month? Yeah. Yes. Did you buy her the glowworm toy? It was a birthday present. Are you gonna come on the boat with me? Ugh, the fucking boat? Yeah, listen to me. This is me. <laughs> this is the part of me trying to be a better person. Okay, Ava? You know, Eric's bringing somebody very important. I need you with me. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Everything is happening faster than it should, Ava. I, I, you know, I came back here looking for a cause. Okay, and, and I found one. But then I found you. And, and I want... I want you both. I want, I want it all. Oh, what's your dumb boat's name? I, well, I didn't, I didn't name her. It's the, uh, Little Mermaid. Yeah, it was too cheap to have it painted over and it kind of, <laughs> it kind of grew on me. Your boat's name is the Little Mermaid. <laughs> you gonna come home?
Come home. Now. Okay, let's go. Finish up, get the tab, let's go. Come home. See you in 10. Welcome aboard the Jane Dean. Wow. Tell me again, David. How are you on the fucking boat? Oh, come on, man. Do I have to? <laughs> he got it from investors on a movie he was producing when they went bankrupt. Yeah, but I like to think it was just a worker claiming the spoils of Man, I'm just having a hard time wrapping my mind around your previous life, man. You don't know that half of it. Yeah, you don't need both. <laughs> well, here we go. Yeah. Permission to come aboard? What's that? Permission granted. David. David. This is Riordan. She's a member of a group called Greenstorm. Come on, man. No introduction, Dean. <laughs> Riordan, how are you? You said you thought we might need some help. Yep, some help and some guidance. Let's hear it. Okay. Um, well, Prosper and Sovereign Pipeline, as you know, means to supply the Midwest with gas at a rate of 500 pounds per square inch, right? It's this high pressure, high wave, natural gas screaming through our communities, and it's nearly finished. And we know they're getting worried because they're sending spies into our group. We know this. But they're winning. So I've been trying to think of a solution. Uh, this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, if you look right here, Okay, this is a major section of the pipeline that's yet to be started. And what makes this area unique and why it's yet to be developed is that access to it's tricky, okay? There are only uh, two roads that can support the construction traffic, and they're both fed into this highway here, all right? This is Highway 75, and that highway crosses that bridge right there. That's the Salisbury Bridge. It spans the Sally River to the tune of 2,000 square feet. So, we shut that bridge down, and they would have to reroute all of this construction traffic all the way around to this bridge up here, okay? This would set them back months. I mean, this would be a huge blow financially. It's nice work. Thanks. You want to put this all on your own? Uh, well, me, Ava, and of course, Eric here pointed out that we are a little short on that. I said it would only work if we had an organization behind it. Well, I've done stuff like this, but it's never fun. We tried to shut down construction in Sandusfield. We suspended ourselves over the highway for two days. The state cops actually lit a fire under me. Mm -hmm. They like to burn witches in Massachusetts. <laughs> I, I remember watching that trial on TV. When you poured that glass of water over that CEO's head, it was a big deal. Oh, the theatrics play well on the news. Well, we're looking for a little more theatrics. We are looking to do real damage to Boston. Sure, but how long do you think you can hold the bridge? Well, Half the cops now are ex-forces. They treat this stuff like it's Fallujah. You ever done anything like this before? How serious are you? Okay, Reed. I said I vouched for the guy, and I meant it. Yeah, and I do too. I'm sure you do, sweetie. You can tell by that look in your eye. Okay, Reed. Let's just. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some fresh air. Sure, you're not putting on a show to impress the pretty young activist. Give me Reed. David. Yeah, excuse me, sir. He's a good guy. Hey, how long have you known him? Long enough. I know what she sees in him, but you? Look, he's serious, he's loyal, and he's not afraid of action. Honestly, sometimes it kind of scares me. He nearly killed Peter. I hate Peter. Okay, well, there you go. All right, so you're going to help us in that. I'll take you to meet the others at Convergence. Fantastic. They'll hear you out. But let's talk about the details outside. The whole space is not. Let's see. Yeah. Hey, this. Is that kind of weather?
Reorg made me feel like I meant nothing. Like I was a little girl. She was bitch to everyone, you know, and but I, I really think we can we can use her. I don't want you doing anything that's going to get you locked up, David. Well, I think we're both past the point of a peaceful protest. Don't you? And if I got to spend a day or even a month in a jail cell, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I mean, what did you think I was doing with Eric's friends? You know, this is the mission. Fuck the mission. David, we're having a baby. What? I'm pregnant. What? I mean, that's, that's in... That's in, that's incredible. Yeah? Yeah, that's... Wait, how, um, how long, how long have you known? Yeah, this could be your second chance. But we can do this together. We have to do this together, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it all. Well, there, can, there can be other people who can sacrifice themselves for the cause. Only you can be a father to this child. You want to change the world, I get it, yeah, but for who? This is who. Okay, Ava. We have to, we have to think this through, okay? I've thought it through. Yeah, no, I'm saying we have to think this through. I've thought it through, trust me. David, I was supposed to be something special. Okay, I... My music, I was, I was supposed to be a big deal, but this, Eric, everybody, you know, I, um, I was drawn to them because they were different, because they wanted to change the world, you know? My music's, it's not good enough. I'm never gonna be famous. I've learned that maybe there's nothing wrong with being ordinary. Ordinary can be magical. I'm falling in love with you, David. Okay, this, this feels right. Ava, I love you. I know that life comes at, at you in waves, and, um, you know, it's possible to miss out on your chance, and I've definitely, I've definitely missed out on my chances before, and I'm not going to do that again. I, ha I have to be a part of this. I have to. Why is this so important? Because, Ava, okay, it's... Ava, I'm, um... We've... 
will you just trust me that it is? Please. Please. We're having a baby, David. I know. Do you? Can't get past the professional. Damn near on the wall. No, that's just a screw. Yeah, I said. It's right there. Pretty good, right? Hey, about Simon, one of the. Uh, Simon was a cocksucker. A friendly warning man. You try and do me like you did him. I'll take you down with me. Understood. I wish you could get them all to come out here, but it's not gonna happen. Kills me having to play on that turf all the time. And Greenstorm are on the ball. Myself, an exception. You think Riordan is suspecting anything? Or? She's just paranoid. Here, you can have this. Looks like a belt buckle. I'm gonna find it. Call my cock cam. <laughs> You're not gonna wear it? This goes into evidence. I wanna be on that video. The government types are okay. This is your crusade, but I'm trying to make a living. When this goes down, Riordan will be out for revenge. And she knows it. And she looks at you just like she can see right in your soul. Yeah. Okay. You want to uh, you run it one more time? Sure. Oh, let's do it. <clears throat> yes. I don't get it. How long are you closing the bridge for? Well, I reckon we can close the bridge for about a week. You know, we get some hanging tents on the suspension. We were talking about getting a truck up there, maybe turning it over, flipping it. I don't see how you think you're gonna hold it that long. I was in Portland for the icebreaker and they got through after two days. That was different though. They were going under the bridge. Two days a week, it still doesn't move the needle. Damn, you're coming at me, man. Yeah, man. All right. Let's see what you got. All right. Well, look, do I think a week's gonna change the world? No, I don't, but we have to do something. And if I can make the bridge disappear, then I would. It doesn't need to disappear, it just needs to stop being a bridge. This is where Riordan will say, fortune favors the bold. Fortune favors the bold. Well, I do have a plan B. Go on. The bridge has four main support foundations, right? Now, if we attach explosives to one of those pillars, just one, we take that whole bridge down. Like bridge over the river Kwai, right? And we can do it at night, so nobody gets hurt, you know? We just don't know where we can find that amount of explosives. They would call us terrorists. Well, they already do. Right? The history of America, bomb making is how you teach truth to power. Right? You want to stop the pipeline, right? And this is where I'll, I'll look at everybody. So, let's stop the pipeline. Let's scare them. Okay, because Prosperance Projects are going to poison our communities for generations to come. They're already hanging them out to dry. Right? Saginaw, Midland, Flushing, Flint, you name Stop it. Stop talking. You had them with the America and bombs bit. Just keep quiet, no matter how much you want to talk. People hate silence. Let them fill it. And then you and I will toast each other with some tofu dogs. Man, I miss steak so much. We'll go get one right now. A method. I can't break character like that. <laughs> Plus, they can smell it on you. That girl of yours, Evie? She tasted it. Uh, Nick's Avery. What hell of a work of a job. Get off my book. So sweet. You get to do the thing? Hey, 
Are you holding up, babe? Throwing up, listening to records. The music you hear in the womb is what sets your taste for life, so I'm taking it seriously. No, I, I trust you when it comes to the music. <laughs> yeah, Eric and I are meeting Riordan in about an hour, Green Storm Inner Circle. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of freaking out. I really wish you were here. Well, just be careful, David. Don't get in trouble. Nah, there's no chance of that, because they take the security so serious with these pat-downs and dead drops, but I, I really mean it. I wish you were here. This sleeping bag is way too big for one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I did the math, and I think that that sleeping bag was where we conceived. Remember that time at Silver Ridge? Wow. A true child of the Resistance. A uh, child of the universe. Conceived under the stars. Wow, you're big. Oh, I'm sorry. Big? Watch your mouth, David! Thank you. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I'd like to meet Alba. I feel closer to her carrying a brother or sister. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Um, we should. Uh, I just... Alba's mother is... Well, she, you know, she doesn't know yet, so... Okay, well, you should tell them. I don't want there to be any bad blood. I want our child to feel connected to the whole family tree, all the branches. Have you, uh, have you thought of more about names? Such a responsibility. If it's a girl, Jane Mary Jones Martin. And if it's a boy, James David Jones Martin. Yeah, I hate my name. Let's get it out of there. Yeah, I've always wanted to change it, so. You hate your name? David, you good? Yeah, I'll be right out. Uh, I gotta go. It's game time. Wish me luck. I love you. And Jane. James. Whatever. Yes. Hey. hey. Oh, wow. This is, uh, very cozy. <laughs> These are the boys from Ann Arbor. The organizing group. We know Reorden. Yeah, we know who you are. So what's the point? Well, um, we all we all want to stop the sovereign pipeline, right? And there's this major section of it that's yet to be started. And the reason it's yet to be started is because access to that area is a little bit tricky. Um, the construction traffic would have to go through this ravine, and there are only there are only two roads that feed into, it, and they both are fed into by Highway 75, which has to go over the Salisbury Bridge. Yeah. And um, well, if we could shut that bridge down, we could, we could make them reroute traffic all the way back around. This, this would set them back months, and this would be a huge blow financially for them. I don't get it. How long are you closing the bridge for? Well, uh, we think about a week or so. We talked about hanging tents on the suspension, um, maybe a truck up there. We could flip the truck. You know, that'd be something. I don't see how you think you'll hold it that long. I was in Portland for the icebreaker. They got through it in two days. Yeah, but that... That was different, because they, they were going under the bridge. Right? Two days a week still doesn't move the needle. Yeah. You're, look, you're right. A week does not change the world, right? But we have to do something. OK? If I could make the bridge disappear, I would. Right? I can't make the bridge disappear. Uh, OK. But. Uh, there is, there is another thing we've been throwing back and forth in the organizing group. Um, kind of a, a plan B, something just bigger. Uh, the bridge has four main support foundations, and if you were to attach enough explosives to like one of those pillars, the whole thing would come down. Like the bridge over the river, quiet. Hey, hey, listen to me. We could do it at night. Nobody gets hurt, except we don't know where to find all that amount of explosives. So. That sounds dangerous. Well, I mean, in the history of America, bomb making is how you teach truth to power, right? And we are out of options. We have few. We all want to stop this pipeline, right? To destroy it. So shouldn't we be fighting back? Come on, right? I mean, fortune favors the bold, right? What about you, Eric? Are you on board with this? Are you want to blow up the bridge? Look, 
I want to do this. Thank you. Oh God, that's everybody. Hey, it's okay, Tom. David, Eric, why don't you guys go outside? I was expecting to speak tomorrow. I'm at home. Look, um, Green Storm's out. Cunt Tom, he totally screwed me and made me out to look like a lunatic. I heard. What do you mean you heard? Black Kite changed the plan. They decided to go deeper on Green Storm. Wait, you knew? Yeah, they agreed to share their intel. It's a good plan. Is this because of Simon? This is because of Simon, huh? We're all adults. This is a strategic decision we made together. Okay, but how do I recover this with my group? You don't. We're putting together the paperwork right now to round up the group and get you some scouts. Are you, you're pulling, are you pulling me out? Are you pulling me out? This is always a finite operation. It's not a lifestyle. Fuck. Listen to me. We're not done here, okay? There is more. We are not done. All right, just start working on your exit plan. You need to get your head back in the game. David, where the hell are you? Where are you? I have to keep Jones alive, Mike. Especially right now, it's, it's just, everything's getting so tough. Your field supervisor tells me you haven't commenced your exit plan? No. No, I haven't. We're moving to the second phase. Soon we're gonna round up all your Detroit friends, everyone who was on that boat. Okay, this is gonna look like a well-organized operation. No, not Ava. Not Ava, Mike. No, no, Mike! Mike! Ava was a means to an end! It helps have a pretty face in the lineup. Remind the public the terrorists come in all shapes and sizes. You need to start following protocol. Okay, and what about Green Storm? No, this is a huge mistake, Mike! I'm telling you, listen to me. Listen to me, David. Okay? We are the ones upholding the law. We want to keep the darkness back. The irony of this job is that to uphold those laws, we're the ones who sometimes have to bend them. Okay, we bend them, we don't break them. I've been doing this for a long time, and I have made my men contort and twist themselves in all manner of ways. But none of them have broken. Please don't be the first. Okay, I'll review the exit plan. I'm so excited to come see you all tonight. <clears throat> you know when you've had a hard day and you want to work out some kinks, just let off steam with some like-minded freaks. Yeah, you get me. Easy, easy, right? Hey, Davey. Just so you know, this week it's all voyeur chats, so. Others can watch if they pay. Okay, okay, I'll turn it off, but you have to understand it's just for you. Okay. It's just you and me. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, everything's really screwed up right now, okay? My girlfriend's pregnant and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna have to leave her and my wife, she's gonna leave me when I go home. I know it, I'm getting fucked right now. And I just need you, okay? Sounds pretty messed up. But things have a way of working out. Oh yeah? How, 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 do, they, how do they work out? I don't know. What? Well, if half the stuff that you told me is true, then I don't know you had this coming. Who are you to judge me? You don't know anything about me. I know you like the grammatics. Mm -hmm. I know your favorite food is rare steak, but it has to be cooked in butter. You're a good listener, except when you're stoned. Your family is from France. Your favorite movie is Lady Eve. You do yoga on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and you want to run a marathon. I'd even told you I would run one with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a smart guy, you're very stupid. Sorry, I, 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 really, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Yeah, well, guess what? Too bad, I just paid for more time. Okay. Do you see this thing here? That thing protects me. It doesn't protect you. So, with one click, I can ban you from my channel, and you're out of my life. <laughs> Bitch. Click.
you want a coffee? Yes, thank you. All right. I think we all know now what happened at Convergence, how that went down. I think going forward, what we need to do is decide as a group if we want to try and organize something else around David's bridge plan, or maybe... We don't need to vote here, all right? We got wrapped up in that narrative on the boat, but we back now. We need to accept the fact that the pipeline is done, and we need to get in front of the next big thing. No, that's bullshit, man. We need to act on this now. On the pipeline, otherwise I really I don't understand what we're doing. Hey, Eric said that we need help to make this thing safe. Yeah. Brainstorm said no. Yeah, we've already talked. I know. And is it true you wanted to blow up a bridge? Uh, okay. Uh, no, let's no. Do we, look. Let's let's everybody. It's like, take a deep breath, okay? We're all trying to accomplish the same thing here. And arguing is... David! Hi. Who, uh, who's this? I'm Karen. I'm a friend of David's. We used to date back in California, but that's ancient history now. You must be Ava. Um, you know who I am, but... Are you Elvis mom? No, no. Not the maternal type. Who's Elvis? David. Karen, this is not okay. Sorry, honey. I was in town and I wanted to call in on you. I saw your man out, but I didn't realize you have company. Yeah, we're going to talk about this outside. Well, I called first, but I, you know, I like surprises. Well, that is odd. You've never mentioned to Karen. Well, you know what? Her timing was good, because I'm pretty sure David was about to tell us we're all terrible activists. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't been able to stop talking about the bridge since he came back from Convergence. Yeah, um... Things got pretty intense. Tell me about Karen. 